thank you for having me today. I'm excited to present a proposal, how to increase communication between the substitute teacher and school administration. Now here's the thing, a substitute teacher goes in, usually they are not armed with the information that they need about the school or the students, things that they will come into contact with during the day. Let's change that. First of all, most substitute teachers are looked down upon. People think that's the worst job in education. They have challenging work conditions, total lack of evaluation of their jobs, insufficient training, and a lack of integration into the schools or the school district. Honestly, the number one obstacle for the substitute teacher is poor behavior because many students feel obligated to push behavioral boundaries because their base teacher is not there. Now, is there a way to change any of these elements? Yes, most definitely. With a system of organized communication, long and short. Now, most businesses have a new employee orientation for the, their new employees. It holds hands-on training, videos, instruction, reviewing company policy, I suggest that we Im implement the same thing. Substitute teacher orientation. New STO. New substitute teacher orientation. In New STO, we have a three-pronged program. The first prong of the program is an official orientation that the new substitute teacher must go through. It's hour long in length and it consists of a video or one-on-one -on -one time with a school administrator or some other prominent staff employee. It also has several minutes available to spend on a substitute teacher guide, reading it through, understanding it. In it, you will note behavioral expectations, interactional expectations between the substitute teacher and the students, and the preferred way to discipline students, along with the general flow of the school. Now, this orientation period would also include 20 minutes with that staffer in order to answer questions or allow the staffer to emphasize specific issues that are exclusive to that particular school or district. And then there would be a time set aside for dialogue and questions. Each school or district would create a new substitute substitute teacher guide. In this guide, now this is a sample and it's an abbreviated version. In this guide you would post policies, standards, expectations, routines. You would also tell the substitute teacher where they can find things like the restroom or yes, help yourself to the coffee in the teacher's lounge which is located three doors down from the main office. Things like that. Now, each individual teacher prior to the beginning of school would also create their own substitute teacher packet. Now in this packet, no more than two pages in length because a sub is usually arriving at the school running to begin with. It could include seating assignments, maybe name tags for the students to wear all day, class schedules, um, common class procedures. Is it common to move a student's clip up when they are well behaved or take away recess privileges if they are not finishing their work? Things like that. Um, policies that include computer, iPad or iPod usage, special privileges, reward or demerit systems, codes of contact, conduct, that sort of thing. 
the teacher would also include something along the lines of the location of commonly used items and hopefully they would be clearly marked, a list of helpful students, conversely a list of special needs students, those who are on the IEP plan, 504, special needs and their profiles, some have special health needs and you have to remember to send them to the health room at a certain time. Emergency contact information, how to work through a drill, whether it's a tornado drill or a fire drill. Extra work ideas, additional responsibilities. Do I have to do after school carpool line? Do I need to grade the papers? Etc. Etc. Should we stack the chairs at the end of the school day? In addition to that, when a teacher is absent, they are required to lay out their lesson plans in an organized manner. Now, let's be honest, sometimes you wake up at 4 a.m. and you don't want to go to school because you're sick. Well, that's when you have your team teacher go into your classroom and lay them out for you. Easy. At the close of each day, each substitute teacher will fill out a substitute teacher report to base teacher. It has things like date of assignment, name of base teacher, which are filled out by the substitute pool administrator and then handed to the substitute teacher. She can scribble down the answers throughout the day. Please note what work was not completed. Hmm. Well, we didn't complete worksheet 3.1. That takes like five seconds to write down. Please note any additional work that was completed. Any students that were especially helpful or how they were helpful. Name names. Any students who were especially disruptive and why? Students who were tardy. Students who used a hall pass and why? Et cetera, et cetera. Now, this, does, this form is designed to be front and back, but it is filled out throughout the day. Each form is kept by that base teacher for every day that they are absent, unless something occurs where <clears throat> there is a problem and another person has to be brought in. The reports are kept in her desk or his desk until the end of the year, then turned in to the substitute teacher administrator who operates the pool of substitute teachers. That person will then take all of these and go through each one, determining whether this substitute teacher is a candidate for long-term subposition or if we could recommend them to other principals are they best suited for a particular classroom? Should we no longer consider them as a viable resource? Etc. Etc. All of this should be combined in a short or long, as the administrator feels is necessary, professional evaluation. I think that substitute teachers miss the connection between a school and themselves. Creating an evaluation like this is one way to encourage relationships to begin and to keep going. It's a lot easier to reprimand or correct a child with whom you have a relationship, period. Now, a substitute teacher that has a relationship with the school or administration or staff teachers, um, you know, the, the school custodian, the school secretaries, they are more vested in that school. They will work harder, they will work over and above, and they will be your best resource to go to when you're in a pinch. Truth is, substitute teachers have a very job. They're called on to do a lot of things that they don't expect in a day's time. However, 
if we have some controllable means of communication between the substitute teacher and the teacher she's subbing for or administration will that bring attention to important issues or areas that the teacher or the administration needs to look out for or look into on a regular basis isn't it important to have an extra pair of eyes on our students, on our programs, on our teachers? Yeah, this will pare down the substitute pull a little bit. But wouldn't you rather have a better communicator, a better teacher, a better educator in your classroom substituting when the base teacher is out rather than someone you cannot trust someone who has no skill in behavior management someone who will just babysit our students Poof, have a great day